Okay, so moving on to the ray tracing feature here in After Effects CS6, we're going to take a look at this shot here. And if we wanted to add 3D text here in replacement of this Pokeball, here's how we'd go about doing that. Let's go ahead and add a new text here. And we're going to just go ahead and type out Pokeball using the Pokemon font, which you can download for free online. Just go ahead and Google that. But we have a Pokeball text here. And with it brought in here, we're going to pre-compose this by hitting Command Shift C. And we brought all that into a new composition. Now we have just the Pokemon text here on its own. And one thing to note is that ray tracing can take a lot of computer energy. So we want to minimize that by adjusting some features. We've created a new solid here by hitting Command Y. And now we're going to bring that underneath. We're going to change uh, both of these layers to 3D layers. Now we're going to go Layer, New, Camera. Add a new camera here. And we're going to use a 35 millimeter focal length. We're going to go layer, new, light, and add. We want to make all these adjustments before we turn on ray tracing because it's going to allow us to do it a lot faster. We're going to turn on our cast shadows. And we're going to go ahead and diffuse light a little bit, as well as bring down the shadow darkness. Go ahead and hit OK there. And we can see we've added in our light, and we're now working in 3D, but ray tracing has not been turned on quite yet. Now we're going to hit W to rotate this plane and then V again to bring it down just below the text and now we can bring in our bottom layer just as a reference here okay okay so now we can do is hit C for camera and we can rotate this plane around we're working in 3D here until it matches with our floor in our original scene so we're just gonna kind of eye that it doesn't have to be perfectly accurate but that looks about right there and now we can hit V and take our light and move it around so we're gonna move it higher and up to the left because we can see in our scene that the light uh, we've got a wall there so we've got a light coming in from the side and it's pretty soft um, but we want to just move this off to the left and the lights not coming from any specific direction as far as front or back um, but we definitely know that it's coming from the left and now we can take our text layer here and we can go down into our material options and actually turn on our shadow so that it, a shadow is casted when the light hits this object and we can see it's already starting to look pretty cool and so we have our pokeball text now casting a shadow and now what we can do is go into our solid layer here go to the material options so we're going to turn the we're going to turn the, the cast shadow off, but we're going to turn our receive shadow to only. So it's only going to give us pixel values for the shadows that's the shadows that are being casted onto it. So now we can see that the Pokeball text is casting shadow onto this backplate footage here. And we could make the Pokeball text any color that we'd like. But it is going to be affected by our light. So the lighting of our text will be affected by the light at this point. But what we can actually do is go into our material options and adjust these a little bit here. So all these settings can be messed around with and adjusted to your liking. But for now we're going to go ahead and leave these settings in. Now we can go here and click on the top right now. This is where we're going to enable the ray tracing. So now if we click on this guy right here, we can enable our ray tracing and our computer is going to start to work a lot harder. Something we can do here really quick is adjust our ray tracing settings here. We can choose the ray tracing quality that our render is taking place. And we want to have this pretty low draft quality when we're messing around with things. But we want to, when we do our final export, we want this number to be high. Now we can go here and extrude our text as well as add a bevel. You can mess around with these settings here. But I'm going to go ahead and input some sample data into these extrude settings to extend our Pokeball text out into 3D space. Okay, so our scene has now been rendered and we can see that the text has been extruded into 3D and we've added that shadow on. Now looking at ray tracing more on the visual effects side rather than the motion graphics side of things, we can look at the shot here where we have a backplate as well as some green screen footage that's already been keyed out. We're going to go ahead and make a new camera again, bring this to 15 millimeter, And we have these two layers here. One is these drummers and musicians. And we're going to go into our ray tracing settings and turn our ray tracing on. Um, we're going to bring the settings low for now so we can work with it uh, 
with ease and speed. We're going to turn both these layers on as 3D layers. And now we're actually going to go into our draft mode so that we can work extra fast. Because again, ray tracing does require a lot of computational real estate. And we want to be wary of that. So we have here our extrude um, bending. We have our bend settings here. So let's go into our two view here. And we can take this layer, which has been made 3D, and we can bend it in 3D space, which is awesome. So we've bent it certain percentage we've got several segments we've got four segments that's being bent into we can raise that but it's, again it's going to um, raise the amount of computation that our computer has to do um, we can look at the top view and see that this layer has been extended into a box because it's now taking up 3d space which is not 2.5d it's actually 3d so really cool and um, now that we have this layer made into 3d the reason that we're bending it is because we want to be able to move a camera around and see parallax, but we want the bottom, the ba this background to look as though it's actually a three-dimensional background rather than just a flat plane. So if we bend it, it's going to give us the illusion that it's um, three-dimensional. So we have this background layer here, and we're going to turn off our front layer. And if we take this layer and shrink it, we can see that it is in fact being bent and we can see that warp on those divots on the bottom and top which are showing this warp and if we move our camera around in 3D space we can see this box which is representing our newly warped 3D plane and let's go ahead and bring that back up um, if we look from the top we can also see this warp But let's go ahead and size that up to its full size. And we want to make it larger than our composition so that we can move around with the camera and not run out of space. And now we can turn on our front layer again. We've got both of these layers selected. And what we can do here is make our quality bring down our quality so that we can move around with it faster and we have our front layer here let's grab it and we're going to take our bring it forward in our Z space really close to the camera and then we're going to scale it down so that it fits back into its original position but we know that it's closer to our camera now in Z distance again we're working here in 3d so we can take our back layer and move it further back in Z space and scale it up and now we can bring in a new camera and set a keyframe position at the beginning, move the 100 frames forward and hit C, shortcut. And this is going to allow us to move our camera forward in Z space. We can see we've got some nice parallax going between our foreground and background object. And before rendering out, we actually want to go into our ray trace settings here at the top. And we're going to adjust them here. Um, bring it up higher so that we can get a nice res um, final export. Hit OK, hit OK, and change our output to full and clip our viewer region. And now we can render through this and we can see that because we've bent our background object we've got some nice parallax going on and we're giving the illusion of 3D and this is all happening with the new CS6 3D edition. So the new CS6 ray tracing features that I really enjoyed were the reflections, improved shadows, lighting, and refractions, the ex 3D extruding and bevels, which all are great for motion graphics. And then as far as visual effects compositing, goes I really enjoyed the 3D bending option that they've now added in to CS6.